Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another full PC build guide. If you've never built a PC before, you've come to the right place. Here we show you guys how to build the system from start to finish. I guide you guys through the whole process. We're using the newly released RTX 4060 and we're gonna be using it with an Intel processor. Let me tell you guys what we're covering here today. First, we're gonna go over all the parts and their prices, why we chose them. Second, we're gonna jump into the build guide. Remember, if you've never built a PC before, you're good. I got you, I'm gonna cover the whole process. By the end of the build guide, you're gonna have the confidence to build your very first rig, anyone could do it. And then third, at the very end, we're gonna be putting the system to the test against all current popular titles. It's gonna turn into a montage at the end of this video. We're gonna frag it up in a bunch of titles. Let's do it. So first, main star of the show, we went with an RTX 4060 in the white colorway. This one's by Zotac Gaming, let's open it up. Now, 4060s go for 300 bucks. This one, I believe, was 330, and that's only because it's white. So yeah, this very same card is available for 30 bucks less in the black colorway, but I want it to match our theme. Boom. Here's this little guy right here. Looks clean, two fan card. It's got a minimalistic design. It's rocking some silver as well. Back plate looks clean. Here are the video ports it's gonna offer you. The usual three display ports and one HDMI port. Yeah, guys, very clean card that we're gonna be using. So we'll set that to the side. So what we chose to work with our 4060 is an Intel i5 12600K. This goes for 205 bucks. So why'd we go with the i5 12600K? Well, all the 12th gen non-K i5s would have definitely bottlenecked their 4060. And all the 13th gen non-KI 5s would bottleneck your 4060 as well. The 4060 would not be working to its full potential. Now the 12600K, it's a good choice for the price. It doesn't come with a stock heatsink, so we will be pairing it with a dope 35 buck white colorway heatsink. That will keep it nice and cool. And the 12600K is gonna support our 4060 in a lot of different titles and help our 4060 get closer to that 100% utilization when it's gaming, which you definitely wanna do, right? Cause you wanna use what you paid for. And this is a really great combo. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we put the system to the test, you will not be disappointed. All right, guys, so now let's jump into the motherboard. This is the B760 chipset, which means it supports Intel 12th gen and Intel 13th gen. So if you want to upgrade to a 13th gen Intel processor in the future, you're covered. This system is upgrade proof. This is the micro ATX form factor and has built-in Wi-Fi, and it's going to use DDR4. Get this guy out. Boom. It gives us two M.2 SSD slots, and here are the ports it comes with. Gonna get the job done. I'm gonna get the IO shield out, and here's the Wi-Fi antennas if you're gonna be using a wireless connection. For the storage, we're gonna go with a one terabyte M.2 SSD. This is by WD Blue, very speedy storage. I use it all the time, very reliable. For the RAM, we're gonna go with 16 gigabytes, 3600 megahertz, Corsair Vengeance LPX. Good kit for the money. So what's gonna power all our components is a 650 watt bronze rated by Aris Game power supply. Let's open this guy up. And here it is, 650 watts is gonna be plenty of juice for all the components in our system. And also, if you wanna make any upgrades, 650 watts is gonna cover a couple upgrades as well. And now, what are we gonna be putting everything in? Let's get this case. This is a micro ATX case by BitPhoenix. BitPhoenix is an OG company in the PC case game. This is their Nova Mesh M. It comes with three pre-installed RGB fans, so that's cool. Two in the front and one in the back. Accessories are found in the back of the case. We take a look at the front of the case. Plenty of airflow right there in the front. This build's gonna look sick. All right, guys, that covers all our essential components. So all the parts we're using for the build will be listed in the video description. Now for the parts that are totally optional, but they up the aesthetics of our build by a lot. This is our custom sleeve power supply cable extension kit in the white colorway. So in the front of our build, this is gonna be on display. Beautiful clean white cables, instead of the stock cables that look not so clean. Custom sleeve extension cables look way better, make your system pop way more, it's gonna look way dope. We want more light inside our build, so we're gonna be using our Crater RGB extension kit. The kit comes with two RGB LED strips that are very flexible. The cables we need to connect it to the motherboard and a lot of super strong magnetic attachments. So it can sit cleanly inside our case. We're also gonna be throwing our GPU support in there. And last, our Funko Pop of choice, we're gonna be using Vegeta. It's gonna look sick in there. And that's it, that's all we're gonna be using for this build. You can pick these up on our site, craterhq.com. All right guys, let's jump into the build guide. All right guys, let's get our i5 open. First, we're gonna be installing our CPU this little guy right here, into our CPU socket. Okay, so get the lever of the CPU socket, pull it to the side and all the way up. Pull this all the way up. Take a look at the CPU. Golden little arrow on the bottom left-hand side of it. We took a look at our CPU socket. There's also an arrow on the bottom left-hand side of it. Put this back up. We line up the arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the CPU socket. So we're gonna hover over our i5 and let it drop into place. That didn't go in, no worries. Just lift it back up and try again. Hover it over. 
let her drop into place. And there you go, our i5's in. We're returning this back down. Make sure that this part is underneath this metal right here, like that. And now we return the lever back to its original position, pull it all the way down and tuck it into here. You will feel some resistance that is normal. This piece comes off by itself. Cool, it's in. Next, we're gonna install our cooling, the heat sink. So let's open this thing up. It has a V right here. I'm facing it in front of me. Inside the bag, we want this back plate that says Intel, and we want this Intel bag, the thermal paste, fan attachments, screws, fan right here. First things first, flip this over, open up the Intel bag, get the screws out. We get this, we're going to slide this into here, secure it with the screws. All right, it's in all the way. Same thing for the other side. Get it into place, secure it with the screws. All right, that's done. Now, these things, we wanna move them not all the way to the end like that, but pretty close to the end, like right there. Do it for all four. This one's already in the position. This one is too. This one, a little more over there. That looks good. Now they all line up. All right, that's good. We get our motherboard. So now we have our motherboard in front of us and these, we wanna put these all the way to the end. Boom, boom. We're gonna put this underneath the motherboard. These four points, we're gonna put them through these four points. And there we go, it's all lined up. Now we're gonna lay it on the desk and line it up. Cool. Now we're ready to secure this. First, we need to put thermal paste on top of our i5. Check it out. We wanna put a pea-sized amount on top of it. So I'm in the middle of it. I'm gonna squeeze, 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 squeeze. I'm gonna give myself a little pea-sized amount in the middle of our i5 CPU. All right, I'm gonna lift up. Now look at the heatsink and remove this protective film. We're gonna line up all four sides with the four points on the CPU. Now the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna lay it down carefully. So I'm making sure that all four points are gonna line up before I touch the thermal paste. Everything looks good. I'm gonna lower it down gently and yes, everything lined up good. If I need to make small adjustments, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, good. Now, when we secure, we wanna secure one end a little bit. Once one side has attached, we're gonna move to the screw across from that one so we can secure this heatsink evenly. That one's attached. And now this one down here, now the one across from that one, this one. All right, cool, we got all of them attached a bit. Now we can finish tightening them. So I'll start with the first one again. And that's in all the way. When the screwdriver stops, that's it. It's in all the way. Now the next one. So I'm screwing, screwing. And once my screwdriver stops like that, that's how I know it's good. It'll let you know when it's fully secured by the screwdriver stopping. Next one, screwing, screwdriver starting to stop and it has stopped. It's good to go. Last one. Mm, done. It doesn't let you over tighten it because it does stop you when it's in all the way. Everything looks good. Now we're gonna attach this fan onto it. So I have the cables over here and the black sticker is gonna be facing the fan. It also has arrows right here, which means that the air is gonna blow in from here through this heatsink and cool it. All right, so first we're going to get this little metal attachment, put it through here and the bottom point as well. And we're gonna be clipping it into here. That's gonna hold the fan into place. Now, same thing for the other one. I'm gonna put it through the bottom point and the top point, just like that and clip it in good fans in now the fan has two cables one of the cables is to connect the actual fan to the motherboard and that's gonna go right here it's labeled cpu fan should look like that. And now the second cable is for the lighting of the fan. That's gonna go right here three pin rgb header it only goes in one way the arrow is gonna be on the left hand side that's in. And if we take this off of this part of the cable, this is a chain system. So we can hook up another three pin RGB device into this. And we are gonna do that, but we'll go over that later. Now the installation of our RAM. So we're gonna get the levers of slot two and slot four of our RAM slots. We need to line up the indent of the RAM where it's not indented on the RAM slot. So this way, and I'm gonna put it into place. And once I have it into place like this, then I'm ready to push down with both of my thumbs all the way till it goes in. And you'll hear a clip and this lever will go all the way back up. Same thing for the other RAM stick. Put it into the fourth slot. All right, it's in, push down with both thumbs. Done, RAM installed. Now our SSD. I'm gonna remove this heatsink with a zero screwdriver. Take it off. Now let's get our M.2. So this little thing, we're going to push it in right here. And then we want to pull this black lever towards us like that. And now the M.2 can sit right on top of it. And now we're going to move that lever to the right and it's going to hold on to our M.2. And now our M.2 SSD will no longer go up. It's going to be secured by that right there. Now, before we put the heatsink back on, let's turn it around and remove this protective film. And we secure the heatsink on the SSD. 
Nice. Now we're ready to put our motherboard inside our case. So before putting any motherboard inside a case, you want to make sure that all the points of the motherboard line up with a motherboard standoff inside the case. So for this case, we only need to add two motherboard standoffs, one right here and one right here. So we're going to locate the bag that came with the case. And inside the bag, we'll find two motherboard standoffs that we need and this tool to help us screw in the standoffs. Put a standoff into it and we're going to screw it in. First one up here. So we screwed it in right there. And now the next standoff down here. Cool. So now we'll highlight the two standoffs we added and the other ones that should have already been in place. Now let's get our IO shield, open it up, and we're gonna clip it in from the inside of the case. Wanna make sure that the three dots are on the bottom and just push it in until you hear the click. All right, IO shield in. Now let's lay the case down. It's easier to secure the motherboard this way. All right, so let's get this motherboard in here. When we're laying it down, we wanna first line up the ports of the motherboard with the IO shield. So let's get these fan cables on top of the motherboard. We don't want it under the motherboard and line up the ports with the IO shield. So check to see that everything looks good and it's all lined up. Okay, good. Then the motherboard lays flat and I like to line up the middle standoff with the motherboard. It's like that, this one right here. Now we're gonna secure all the points with this screw that came with the case. motherboard is not secure i'm gonna highlight all the points we should have secured and the one back here as well all right cool guys next step we're gonna get our power supply inside the case so we're not gonna be using all these cables i'm gonna get out of the way the one we're not using we're using these right here now i'm gonna connect our custom sleeve extension cables originally the big 24 pin would have hooked up to the motherboard now it's gonna hook up to the 24 pin extension like that and now this will hook up to the motherboard next ones we're going to locate our PCIe cable. This is going to power our RTX 4060. It has two A pins, but we're only going to be using one A pin for the 4060. So if we take a closer look at it, you'll notice that it splits into six plus two. So when we look at the extension cables, you're going to want to find one that also splits like that. Six plus two. And that's how you know this one is the right cable to hook up. So PCI Express to PCI Express extension. Done. Next, we have our CPU cable. We are going to be using both of these A pin CPU cables. Now this one splits into four plus four. So we want to look for our extension cable that splits four plus four. And we're going to hook up two of these. So the first one, get another one, four plus four, and connect it to the CPU power cable. But we got to slide this together first. Done. Awesome, guys. So now these clean cables are going to be on display in the front instead of the stock. All right, I'm going to clean up these cables real quick with the included combs. All right, guys, now we're ready to secure the power supply. So we want to make sure that the fan is facing down and we're just going to slide it into here. And we're going to line it up and secure with four screws that come with the power supply. They also come with the case as well. All right, our power supply is secure. I want to go ahead and remove the hard drive cage that's inside of here because we don't need it. We're going to be using an SSD. So we're going to unscrew this and then we can just slide it right out. Get this out of there. Now we have more space here for cable management. Now it's time to start plugging in our cables. We're gonna break all our cables down into three groups. First group of cables are the case cables that connect things like the power button and the USB ports up here to the motherboard. Second group of cables is our power supply cables, which power things. And third group of cables is gonna be all our fans and all our lighting. All right, let's do it. So first group of cables are case cables. First cable, HD audio, going to connect right here and it only goes in one way. Should look like that. Next is our JFP1 cables. I'm gonna throw a chart up on the screen. First, we're gonna hook up the HDD LED cable, positive on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'm plugging it into the second row of pins. First and second pins should look like that. And right on top of it is where we're gonna hook up the power LED cables, positive again on the left side. And these go right above the one we just plugged in. First row, first and second pins. Should look like that. Last cable is our power switch. This one, it doesn't matter what way you plug it in. Positive and negative doesn't matter. It plugs into the first row of pins, third and fourth pins right there. Now, right above our JFP1 is where we're gonna hook up our USB 3 cable. We're gonna line up the hump here on the left side. You wanna line it up straight and then push right in all the way and it'll look like that. Okay, so we're done with all our case cables. Now moving on to our second group, the power cables. So we're gonna go ahead and plug our first one up here, our big 24 pin power cable. So I'm gonna work it in. We're gonna have this clip clip back here. So I'm gonna line it up straight and push it all the way in. And it looks super clean, guys. Look at that. Next power cable, we're gonna hook up our CPU power right here. So for the first one, we want the clips to clip on top. Get it in. And once I have it into place, I'm just gonna push in all the way. 
and get it to clip. All right, that's in. Now for the next one, guys, we're not gonna be hooking up all eight, only four. So let's split it apart and plug in only four. And we'll go ahead and clean these up better, but I'm just trying to show you guys how it looks. There you go, so four of them. So this one does not plug in and the other one is in. Looking good, looking good. Cool. So now onto the back of our case. We're gonna plug in our SATA power cable. Doesn't matter which one of these you hook up. I'm gonna be hooking up this one. And this is gonna power the fan controller of the case. All three fans of the case are hooked up to this, but it needs power. We will plug this in right here. There we go. And the last power cables for our RTX 4060, we'll be using this later. But now we're gonna take care of all the fans inside our case and the lighting, our RGB strips. Okay, so let me guide you guys through the strip installation. So first thing we wanna do is we link them together. Boom, both strips are linked. Now we have an extension cable. We will not be needing it. Now we need to hook up. This cable right here is gonna connect both of our strips to the motherboard by a four pin RGB port. So let's connect this to the strip chain. This could keep going. If you wanted to add a third RGB strip, you would connect it to this end. And now I'm gonna use the magnetic attachments to secure it into the case. I'm gonna put one strip up here, the other one down there. All right, that looks clean. Let me show you the finished product. So nicely tucked. And then I made it go down there for the rest of the strip. And this one goes all the way down. Now let's go ahead and hook it up to the motherboard. So here's the end and we're gonna run it under here. It's gonna plug in right here, right next to our HD audio cable. And we want the arrow on the left hand side when plugging this cable in. All right, so we have our RGB strips hooked to the board. Now let's go to the back of our case. So as I mentioned earlier, all three fans and the lighting of the fans are hooked up to the fan controller. So we need to hook up the fan controller to the motherboard to connect all the three fans to the motherboard. So the fan controller has two cables, the lighting of it, which is three pin RGB and a fan connector. So we can go ahead and take care of the lighting first and I'm gonna run it up here. Turn the case around. Now remember I told you that the lighting of our CPU heatsink fan that we already plugged in has this to allow us to hook up more devices. And you guessed we're gonna hook up the lighting of the fan controller to it. Done. Tuck that in nicely. And now we're gonna go back down here and we have ourselves a fan header right here, right next to the lighting of our RGB strips. So now the second cable of the fan controller and we hook it into the fan header, boom. And now all three fans of the case and the lighting of them are hooked up to the motherboard. Now the fun part, we're gonna install our RTX 4060. So first we wanna remove the protective rubber that it had up here and on the ports. And now we need to make room for it inside our case. So we're gonna get the lever of the PCI slot and push it all the way back. And we need to remove the first and second brackets to make room for our 4060. The first one we unscrew comes right off and unscrew this right here and push this thing all the way back like that. Now for the second bracket, we're gonna wanna push in, but push this side over here up like that as you're pushing it down. So then this part doesn't brush up against the motherboard right here and damage it. And now going to just go up and down, up and down and this piece will come up. So now we're gonna line up our card with the PCI slot. All right, once we have it in there and it's lined up, we're gonna push in. Boom, it's gonna go in and that lever that we pulled down earlier will clip back up. Now we need to screw it in with these screws that came with the case. All right, that's secure. Now I can push this thing back and secure that. Cool, final step, our 4060 needs power. And this is where our beautiful A-pin extension cable comes into play. Click it in, clean up this cable. And look how clean the build turns out. Wow, with this cable, way better than the stock. Awesome. All right, guys, and we're done. If you're following along, congrats. Now I need to put the Funko in and cable manage and put the panels back on. All right, guys. Now we're gonna plug it into power and let me get the lights off. First boot up, guys. 
Boom. <laughs> nice. Looks super clean. Look at the way the light affects the Funko Pop. All right, there we go. And when you turn on a PC for the first time, it automatically shuts down and restarts. That's normal. Look at that. Look at the way it affects his hair. Yo, <laughs> that looks super sick. Guys, this build came out so clean. For 800 bucks with a newly released RTX 4060, wait till you find out how much power it has. We're going to frag it up real soon at 1080p. But look, you have yourselves here a system with tons of airflow, beautiful lighting, all the components in a clean white color way and a nice little beefy i5 12600k nicely cooled by our heatsink this is just a b system this system came out awesome guys now we need to install windows 11 from a usb flash drive i made a video on how to install windows 11 for free from a flash drive that video is linked in the video description remember all the parts we use for this build are also linked in the video description now it's time to put the system to the test let's frag it up for Rainbow Six Siege, 1080p resolution max fov to 90 here are the graphics settings let's jump into it Oh, one more right there. It's all right, it's all right. We'll get the next round. Oh! Oh! Whoa! Whoa! One more! One more! I'm going! Go! We got two grown men right here holding a quarter. Let me show you how a real man does it. How did you not? Good job, gentlemen. Oh, right there, right there. Echo, echo on the stairs, echo on the stairs. Oh! If you drop, if you drop it too late. Hey, good game, man. See, it's performance. Not disappointed. Tons of FPS. 1080p. You are so set with any monitor. All right, guys, let's move on to the next title. Settings for Halo Infinite. 90 FOV. 1080p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. Medium graphics settings preset. Let's do it. So this should be a close game again. They're dead. All right, I'm gonna go for overshot. I'm gonna get C. Go for A or something. Man. I'm getting B. I'm getting Ooh, B. Ooh, nice. I'm not gonna get B. Just hold it off. Just hold it off. I'm coming. I'm coming with rocket. I got one of them. Uh, I was gonna get two. They're on. Me. I got a lot of me, so they're done. I'm gonna go for the flank. Got one. I need you to get here. Oh my. Oh, yes, you get me. Okay. Oh my goodness, no, I'm not. Oh my goodness. Oh, what? Oh, no, no, now he's rushing me. <laughs> he's dead. One more, one more. I died. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Dang, mid air shot, boy. There you go. Damn, I'm gonna get B right now. We're gonna win. Bro, not if you not if they both jump in right now and double team you. They did, they did. Wow, he really jumped out and let me get it. <laughs> Alright, Halo Infinite performance is great. Next game. Settings for Call of Duty Warzone 2, 1080p resolution. Here's the quality settings. And for the FOV, boom, max 120. Let's do it. Uh, for top roof, roof. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna die. I was trying. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I'm out of here, I'm out of here. All right, you made it out, good job. Okay, I'm back. Let's get that loading. Oh my goodness, oh my. He's okay. 
Okay, I did the super jumper. Oh my god, there's someone up here. I'm dead. Better not get shot from behind right now. I am, I am. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I need to shoot that guy. Oh my god. I downed them. I'm plating up and I'm getting shot from both sides. One of them was down right in front of us, but. He's right here. Dead. Alright, let's go. Right here, right here, right here. They're in it. They're on top, on top. He's down, he's down, he's down. Let's get into this building. Get ready. Oh, they're in here, they're in here. Behind me, behind me, behind me, behind me. Okay, I'm up, I'm up, I downed I'm up. one, I downed one. Oh, we we got to get out of here. We get in the bathroom that's right here. Okay, let's go, let's go. Move up, move. Right here, right here, right here. Chill right here, chill right here. Landing. I broke his shield. All right, watch that rock. Watch that rock flank, too. We get to the roof, can we? Yeah. Right in front. He's dead. We won. Nice. Good performance. So the settings for Fortnite, we're playing on full screen, 1080p, V-Sync off, performance mode, and here are the rest of the settings. Where are you going? This is not good, this is not good. Oh my goodness, okay. Dead. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Didn't win the game, but I still got eight kills and the game performed really good. On to the next game. Settings for Valorant, 1080p resolution, reflex on on plus boost. Here are the graphics quality settings. Let's do it. Boom, boy. Oh, snap. Uh-oh. Where's my backup? Well, I can already get an op. Let's go. Jeez, why are they doing so much damage? Oh my goodness. Oh, not behind. All right, guys, we're going mid all the way. We're sitting mid, we're killing everybody, okay? Oh my. Bruh. I think I'm going to be surrendered. No. I surrendered, I surrendered. Oh, yeah, you never quit. Oh my God, she's right there, around the corner, bro. Hey, too late. Bam. Oh! Let's go, Joey. Watch this. Shin. One enemy remaining. Last player standing. That's that's trading, Joey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're defusing though. Nice. Get in there. Oh. He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dang. Wow. No, you don't. Bro, a lot of movement over here. Hey, bro. Just wait out. Right. I'm him. Match point. Wow. Oh, oh man. We got destroyed at the end there. Performance is great though. Next game. Settings for Apex Legends, 1080p resolution, max FOV 110. Enable plus boost for NVIDIA reflex. Here's the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Good job, good job, good job. Where 
What if they're already in zone? Oh, I see him. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> he was just right there. That's a wrap, guys. This PC performs amazing. I'll catch you guys in the next one where we're going to be building a super small RTX 4060 PC mini ITX form factor. It's going to fit in the palm of my hands. It's going to be super dope. All right, guys. Peace.